Thank you, Joe, Sharon, Fiora, good morning. Uh, thank you for the invitation. It's a pleasure to be here. I feel I'm a bit of an interloper, but as I will explain, I know about you people. Uh, I want to acknowledge at the outset the crucial importance of rural general practice. It's easy for me to do so. Uh, the term backbone is, uh, I think, works well, actually. Uh, but clearly there's a need for strong and stronger support and I just want to say you have my admiration and respect. If I could have my one and only projection please, there it is. You talk of the backbone, I talk about the keystone. And I talk about primary care being the keystone for health improvement and heart health improvement. Yesterday in Te Papa we had a population health in primary care symposium with 180 registrants and this was the Heart Foundation with the PHO Alliance and the Health Promotion Agency and Tana Cassidy's here today with us again. And I put this up as my first projection uh, to make the point that if you're feeling the stress in that keystone position, it's no surprise. You've got pressure on all sides and a lot of weight bearing down, which is the demand and expectation from your people. But you're up to it. So backbone, keystone, I would say both work well. I have three touch points with rural general practice. My father, Norman Sharp, was the northernmost general practitioner in New Zealand in the 1930s, uh, based at Whangaroa and Kaio, little cottage hospital in Whangaroa. I won't digress, but he had many anecdotes and uh, I think left um, with great affection from the people and did his best at that time in the pre-antibiotic era. Uh, in the 1970s, four decades ago, as a naive but well-intended young doctor, I did a locum in Tolaga Bay for several months. I uh, think I gained some affection from the people. I certainly did my best, and I gained huge respect for what the special area general practitioner had to take on there. And in Tairawhiti recently, I've been back wearing my Heart Foundation hat and seen that community again up and down the coast. The community with the highest coronary heart disease death rate which in Tairawhiti is twice what it is on the north shore of Auckland, and rheumatic heart disease, the same far now. So I've been back, and it bothers me. And most recently, uh, I've been working part-time for 10 years on the west coast as a backup physician in acute general medicine. I've loved it. It's been for my soul, and I hope it's been of some benefit to the people. And I've had a lot of interaction with general practitioners, and this has been one of the most enjoyable parts the telephone calls, often on Friday afternoon, you know? <laughs> and I'm, I always enjoy them. And again, I come away with a feeling of respect for what, what you folk are doing out there. Uh, terrific. Now, moving on. Uh, in October last year, 11 months out from the election, which is now six months away, we launched the Heart Foundation Stop the Heartbreak 2014 pre-election heart health Health Manifesto, and we had a panel there, and Guy and Esper, and it was the EMC, and we had um, we had a panel just as we have today, equally distinguished, I would say, uh, and we have uh, Annette King and Kevin Haig back again from that same panel. I want to pay tribute to the to the panelists, the politicians, Paul, Annette, Kevin, and Barbara. <coughs> you certainly have my respect for what you do day in day out and particularly in the health field, in that most difficult area, that portfolio. I notice Kevin's got his usual green tie on, but Paul, you've also got a green tie on, or is it turquoise? Green and blue, okay. <coughs> Good on you, mate. <laughs> okay. Coronary heart disease is still the single most important cause of death in New Zealand, more than any single cancer, although death rates have come down. And uh, we should not be complacent. A lot of those, of course, are an elder, older people, uh, but many are still premature and preventable. And then if you look at health loss, disability, uh, coronary heart disease is still way far out the number one cause of health loss. I won't regale you with this, but we have four preventive and four clinical priorities, and we can intersect with several of these with you. One is around food and nutrition for children. A lot of work to be done there. We're just beginning. Getting rid of tobacco, the tobacco end game. It's on the way, but it's uh, yet to be seen. <coughs> Eradication of rheumatic fever. And this is where 
we are with you uh, in the uh, rural communities and the urban communities. And I note there are several outstanding champions in our midst. I won't name them because I'll miss some. But these are people, Joe's amongst them, who are carrying on this journey to control and eradication of rheumatic fever, a third world disease in New Zealand. One of a group of close contact infectious diseases, shameful and intolerable. We espouse a first world standard of clinical care and we have rheumatic fever in Porirua, Cannons Creek, in Flaxmere, uh, and so on. You know where it's pocketed. So my tribute to those champions, and there are some in our midst for carrying on this journey, and then physical activity. On the clinical side, it's around these health targets, and our particular target is the heart health and diabetes check. Please help with that for the sake of your people. It's not actually extraordinary. It should be business as usual. We discussed this yesterday. Uh, public awareness of heart attack signs and symptoms don't hang around, you know, 111 and all that, wherever you are. Uh, quality and equity of access to heart treatment services and then follow-up services for people who need it after for ongoing heart care. So I think where we intersect is with the heart health and diabetes checks, and I know it's hard yards, but the, uh, all the DHBs are getting towards the target. We know that a heart health check and a tick box is nothing unless the patient or the person is then effectively managed and supported. Think of it as an opportunity and an entry point into primary care, and then you travel with your patient. Smoking cessation, uh, better support for smokers to quit is also out there, proving a little more difficult in primary care than in the hospital arena. Right, I'm just about done. I come back to the keystone where I started. I think you do need, you deserve more support. I can see that easily from where I sit and I do go around the regions. I think it's a challenge for all of us. I don't think we should necessarily just regale the government and politicians. I think it's for the medical and nursing profession generally and for the community at large and for NGOs and indeed, you know, the whole community when we put it all together. So finally, I salute you all. You certainly have my admiration and respect and best wishes for a fine meeting. I'll now hand over to Tim Malloy.